All right, this is five customers in one day as a Danish electrician. The first customer had a ventilator that didn't work. So let's open it. All right, and beneath the lid, we saw this. Wow, that is definitely working. Except it's just starting and then it's stopping again. I concluded that power-wise, there was nothing wrong, meaning this old ventilator just needed to be replaced. They had another ventilator in the house that wasn't turning off. So, well, let's program it. And after programming it, it stopped, which is a beginning. And after programming it even more, it started to work as intended. On to the next customer. <laughs> At the second customer, someone have dug fiber cables down and they had hit our cables. So you know what we say? Let's fix it. All right, so what sort of damage are we dealing with? Um, so this is one end. That's strange. And uh, that's even worse. So to repair it, I need to remove a little bit more dirt because, well, yeah, you've got to need some space. Such a hard job being an electrician. Uh, they had put concrete down here. So you know what? Let's remove it. Finally, I had the cable exposed and I could cut off the junction box. And with that all removed, it was time to start repairing everything. And at this point, I had created quite a mess. And to repair a cable the correct way, it takes a lot of time. You need to put these blue things on, then these black things on. Then it's time to play with fire. Of course, kids don't play with fire but I'm allowed. That's because we want these black things to shrink around the cable connections and create a watertight solution. And I prepared the second cable while we waited for it to cool down before we could finally put this bigger black thing around it. And it was time to play with fire once again because this bad boy needed to shrink all the way around for yet another watertight seal. With that done, we just needed to connect the other end and with that all fixed, it was time to turn on the power yet again. This box is powering the cables and someone had removed them. So let's put them back in again. And once that was fixed, it was time to turn on the breaker again. But we needed to trick the light sensors to thinking it was dark. That's such a dumb thing. With a glove on, I could look at my finished work and hope that everything would turn on. And with a little peekaboo, I could see that all of the lights were now working, meaning the customer could get the light back. This was such a fantastic feeling. And the dumb sensor could get even more confused. And then we had to clean up everything because, well, I'd created quite a mess. <laughs> The time was now 10 a.m. and it was time for the third customer. When they swapped the third light to LED, all three turned off. So let's look at the drivers. The three new lights used 2.8 watt and this driver was meant for minimum 9 watts. Meaning either we had to swap the driver, add a resistant or do something else. But who cares? Let's look at customer number four. These lights weren't turning on. What was wrong? Well, this bad boy was hiding in a junction box. Well, this little guy is not meant to be here, but this is the guy that turns on and off the lights. But this was meant for 24 volts and at the switch we had 230. The switch was working so let's just put it in again but this little guy was burned out so let's replace it and a little bit later we had a working switch that could turn on and off the lights they just had to be programmed yet again but who cares customer number five had a ventilator that didn't work are they even called ventilators i don't know but there was no power down at the ventilator so what's wrong well yet again i found myself walking around on the attic and while i was taking the bus all the way down to the bottom i realized hang on that's my stop because here we have the ventilator's engine oh boy it's time to go digging because i needed to find out where the power stopped working and as you can hear the power was working fine up here where did it stop well i found this little plug but this baby worked so i tried to follow where this bad boy was running but this was just for the engine and at this point it was quite hot up here but the problem wasn't fixed so i kept digging around oh my god remember a mask Oh, bum, bum, bum. As you can hear, my frustration in my voice really shows how much I didn't like this. Um, because I, I didn't find anything. The cables were just disappearing under the insulation. As the Friday had come to an end, I hadn't found the problem with the ventilator. I concluded there must be a hidden junction box inside the ventilator and it wasn't easy to get down. So I had to come out with a co-worker to take it down and see if we can find the issue. And because this is already 20 years old, we talked with the customer to just replace it to a new one. It's never fun to not find the issue, but with that being said, that was five customers with five separate issues all in one day.